How's it? How's it? If up until this point you have been relying on instinct to compose your photographs, then pretty much you're already on the right track. However, imagine how much more consistent, how much more intentional your photographs could become by truly understanding why those instincts are working and when they are trying to lead you astray. After more than 30 years in photography, I found that composition isn't about a strict set of rules, but it's more about having the right tools to help you guide your viewer's eye throughout the image, how to set a mood, how to be able to express your vision clearly. Today, I'd like to share with you a key insight into composition from a recent Focus and Frame cohort lesson that we had. And in this, you're going to uncover how to shift your mindset from following rules to understanding composition as a set of tools. And that all begins with a simple but powerful understanding of what composition in photography actually does. How's it? Welcome to this workshop on composition. Have you ever wondered how some photographers can create images that seem to suck you in? They leave a lasting impact. Well, the secret to this often lies in composition. In this workshop, we're going to dive into composition. However, not as a set of rigid rules like you may have been taught in the past, but rather as a dynamic set of tools that can help you craft powerful, unique images. Over the last 30 years as a professional photographer, I have come to think of composition as more than just a set of rules, but rather as a framework, a framework that lets me control to shape the way that I see the world around me. At its heart, composition is all about control. It is how we as photographers can guide the person looking at our pictures to understand the idea that motivated us to take the picture in the first place. It is a bit of a dirty word, but manipulate is at the heart of what we're doing here. Composition manipulates in an extremely powerful way. You know, there are studies that show what you already understand in here on an instinctive level, that visual thinkers know intuitively that there are certain ways that a person's eye is guided through the image. Lines, shapes, patterns, colors. All of these are tools at your disposal, tools that we're going to learn how to use throughout this workshop that you can put in place to guide the viewer's eye in a predictable fashion through your photographs. Track the rest of this look at composition. We are going to firstly revisit the essentials, like the rules of thirds, leading lines, symmetry, to better get an understanding about how these actually work on an instinctive level. Then you have a better understanding of the role that these tools play. Just as much as you instinctively wouldn't use a hammer to try and chisel away a slither of wood, so too we wouldn't use a soft, gentle curve to try and add in some dynamic motion into our photograph. Then, once we've got the basics down, we are going to start to think about how to employ them as that framework. This is not about breaking rules, because how do you break rules? This is about using elements that we need to build up our own unique style. As we work through this look at composition, any time that you have a bit of an aha moment, I can just pause the video, go and try out this technique that you've just thought about. Look at it in different scenarios. Take your time. The best way to obviously learn photography is to actually take some pictures. I've already saved you like 30 odd years of having to learn about composition. So take some of that saved time and put it into practice. But ultimately, remember, composition is all about giving you a set of tools to create images that are not just seen, but felt. It is also to give you a better understanding of that little instinctive voice inside you that is helping you to create awesome photographs. If composition 
is all about control. Then at the heart of that control is balance. Now, balance is something that we all understand on an instinctive level. Right now, if I ask you to picture a seesaw, or as I believe you call it in the States, like a teeter totter, right? If you have two children of equal size at either end, the seesaw is balanced. But as little kids are want to discover all over the world, if one of those children jumps off, the seesaw plummets to the ground on one side. It has become unbalanced. Now imagine that the parent has replaced the child who jumped off the seesaw. It's the adult who now falls to the ground. So far, so good. We understand this concept. But if we add two more children to the existing child on the other side, we're probably going to balance out the seesaw again. It's this instinctive understanding of how balance applies that we can use in our photography. I often find that when I'm looking at a photograph, what I'm really searching for, first and foremost, is a sense of balance. And this is one of the first things that I focus on when composing a shot. Does it feel balanced? I find that the rule of thirds is so seductive because placing elements at those intersections that we all have been taught, it just feels logical. It feels, oh, do you know, just simple. It's like balancing that seesaw. Just put a couple of things on there and we're all good. However, often people fall into this idea that the rule of thirds is a rule that strictly limits where we can place elements within the frame. However, I think it's easier if we think of the rule of thirds as a guide to help us create this balance within our photographs. Its purpose as a tool is to help us organize the elements that we see in front of us, but it doesn't need to be followed rigidly because if we have a photograph where everything is where it's supposed to be, just like the two children on the seesaw, it's kind of dull. However, that does create harmony. But I think the best photographs are ones that have a bit of impact. And to understand what impact is in a photograph, let's go back to that seesaw analogy, which is doing a lot of heavy lifting in here, right? And think about the relationships that you could create that go beyond the expected, you know, child of equal size, right? The goal is to create composition that is both harmonious and balanced, but in a way that might be unconventional or surprising. Putting an adult with three children, that's unsurprising. Moving the children closer in also creates balance, but in an unexpected way. Now let's look at these in some practical terms, right? Because there's one thing to talk about this, but let's look at some actual photographs to give you some inspiration about how this could be achieved in the real world. So I used to be a wedding photographer back in the day, and often I would be photographing things that I want to be visually interesting, but also not just be statically boring. Look at this photograph. This is a a groom listening to his best man, I believe it was at the time, he could tell a story. The groom isn't actually on an intersection of a rule of thirds. But does this photograph feel balanced? I would say, yes, it does. We have the groom's face, he's off to one side, but see how he's balanced out by those three heads, out of focus heads, in the background. Put a line across that, put a fulcrum, it feels balanced. So take this photograph here, right? This is the bride's father. There's, well, there's a bit of a trend here with the wedding photographs. He's off to one side. He's framed by two of the bridal party. Okay, so the framing is something we'll get onto in a little moment if you want to learn how to use that like in a really sort of wow way. Look at his face. So he's a bright aspect in the image. Now, he's not on a rule of third once again, but... I've broken up the frame into sections to help me 
balance the image? How have I balanced this photograph? What element is in this image that you might sit there and go, oh, that's really distracting. But actually, if you take it out, unbalances the photograph. It's the window in the back of the left there. That's balancing out the bride's father. When you start to look for these aspects by using this rule of thirds, then it really opens up a world of possibility to create balanced yet impactful compositions. Once again, we have a groom reading a speech. Now, there's a couple of aspects to this, but let's focus on purely the balance aspect. He is sort of on an intersection of thirds, but what's balancing him out is this interesting shape of the mirror, but it's not massively dominating because it's actually working in harmony because it's a reflection of the chat talking to the audience. This is an example of layering, which is a phrase you may have heard about with composition, which we will again touch on. So don't worry about these things if it don't make sense right now. So this photograph here does not conform to the rule of thirds. And it's a great example, I think, of when if you were sitting there going, oh, I must have a picture that must conform to the rule of thirds, otherwise somebody's going to say it's wrong. Remember this. Okay, it's a studio photograph. She's in the center of the frame. It is balanced, but it's not static and dull. It's not the two kids on either side of the seesaw. Why is that? Her face is in the middle. Her body and her torso are in the middle. The stool is in the middle. But look at her arms. Look at her legs. They break up that symmetry, but in a way that feels balanced. They're just subtle visual anchors to make a bit of an impact, but without upsetting the whole system of balance. When you are out and about, you're thinking about creating a photograph. The first thought through your mind should be about seeing what you have to work with and building a balanced, harmonious base on which we can start to in, add in little bits and bobs. This is why we shouldn't think about the rule of thirds as a rule. It's about something we need to conform to, but as a tool, much like a spirit level, to help us just make the world a little bit more you know, harmonious, a little bit more in control. So that is just a short sample of one of the lessons that we cover in the Focus and Frame cohort. There's another one coming up at the beginning of November. Now, in these cohorts, what we do is every week there is a live discussion and there is also a recorded lesson like you've experienced now. And during those Saturday discussions, we get together, we share ideas about what we have discovered within that lesson for the week. We look at each other's photographs and we give helpful feedback and going a little bit further into really getting to grips with these topics to be able to give you not just compositional tools, but a wide range of tools and confidence to really be able to create photographs that when you show them to somebody whose opinion you really, really love, that they go, wow, that is so, so cool. That's far better than just, you know, having some random person on the internet say that your picture is a nice capture. If you're interested in finding out more about these cohorts, as I said, there's one in November, click on the link in the show notes below. Thank you ever so much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Cheerio.